This video is going to show you how to use the arc tool to create various shapes including a circle. I'm going to create a new document inside of Illustrator and I'm going to call it arc tool. I'm going to set it to letter size paper using inches as my units. I'm going to click OK and now I have my document here. I'm going to click on the line segment tool and tear off those tools so that I can move the tools anywhere I want. For this I'm going to use the arc tool. Now just a demonstration of what the arc tool is, if you click and drag it will create an arc. Basically it's like its name. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a circle. A circle basically is uh, four 90 degree arcs put together. I'm going to delete this arc by pressing the delete key and I want to make sure my circle is uh, perfect. If I draw it myself, I can try to get a perfect circle by guessing, but it may look more ovalesque than circlesque. So what I'm going to do is get a little help inside of Illustrator. To do this, I want to put a grid on here to help me line up or align my arcs to create a circle. To turn on the grid, go up to View, Go down to where it says show grid or you can press control and quotations to show the grid. This puts a grid on your Illustrator artboard. Now I'm going to move my tools out of the way. To create a circle I need to take and create four arcs that all are one inch big. To do this I'm going to click right here in between uh, where the darker lines are on the grid and drag up over to the top. Now you can see I have one arc there. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the right hand side and I'm going to drag up and match my spot right there. I want my crosshairs to be right in those crosshairs as well. So now I've created the top half of my circle. I'm going to now click on the bottom part of this quadrant but when I click and drag up notice how it's not doing it the correct way. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. If I click, I can see, if I click without dragging, simply click while selected on the arc tool, I can see here it shows me the type of, first of all, how big the x-axis, that means how long it is this way, as well as the y-axis, how tall it's going to be. It also tells me a couple other things, like if my shape is going to be concave or convex. If I want it to go the other direction, I just have to change it to more concave. Now I can hit OK and you can see it curves. But this is going to be difficult to do. You can see it's hard to get the right measurements. So I want to show you a shortcut key. If you click in between, put your crosshairs in between this spot down here and drag up, you can use your arrow keys up and down will adjust the shape of this circle. And so just align this up and there you have it. You have a pretty decent looking circle that you have created from four separate arcs. Now to create kind of a slope over here. I'm going to click on the arc tool again and I'm going to click up on one of these intersecting points and drag down and then I'm going to click down here and drag up and you can see it creates this slope. Now sometimes you may want to align your align your slope to the grid. If you're drawing and you want your arch to align to the grid or to a point if you go up to view, snap to grid, or snap to point. Snap to grid will make your line automatically touch one of these lines in the grid. Snap to point will make it to where to align to one of where these lines intersect. I'm going to go ahead and turn on snap to grid and show you what that means. If I click and drag, notice how my cursor is kind of jumpy. It's jumping to the nearest line to snap to it. This may be beneficial to you or it may not. If you don't like the snap to grid or the snap to point, you can go ahead and turn it off by going up to view 
and unselect snap to grid and then view unsele unselect snap to point. You can also look at the shortcut keys. To snap to grid is control plus shift and quotations. Snap to point is alt plus control plus quotations. Now let's go ahead and create another shape. Oops, let me hit cancel. I'm going to create almost the iPod shape, kind of a long rounded rectangular down here. To do that, I make sure I have the arc tool selected and I'm going to click uh, my crosshairs in between two of these darker sections on the grid. I click and I drag it up here. Now looking at this, my cursor is upside down. My arc is upside down. There's a shortcut key. If you simply press the F key, it will flip the arc that you're using. It's almost like jump rope, but not as fun. So you can press F and it will flip the arc that you're working with. Then, without letting go, once you let go, you can't do this, you can use your up and down arrows to kind of round out this curve. So I'm going to go ahead and just visually get something that looks pretty round and smooth. That looks good. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to match up my crosshairs. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go down two uh, blocks. And each of these blocks are actually one inch. So I'm going to go down two inches. And I'm going up. Once again, it's upside down. So I just need to press the F key to flip it. And I'm going to put my crosshairs back down here at the starting point and do the same thing. Now I'm going to switch back to the line segment tool, which is right here. And I'm just going to connect these two lines. Now it's easier if you zoom in to see what this looks like. So I'm going to press control plus and I'm going to draw the line once again. So there you can see I've created a rough uh, rounded rectangle. Now looking up here you can see, I'm going to zoom in, I press the space bar when I'm zoomed in to get the hand so I can move, my lines don't quite match up. So I'm going to click on it and readjust the line making sure I'm on the selection tool. Now I'm going to move on to the next shape. Let me zoom out, control minus, and I'll press the space bar and slide over here to another part of the grid. I'm going to create a star uh, using the arc tool. Just a simple four pointed star. I'm going to click on the arc tool, come over here to four free squares, I'm going to put my crosshairs or your cursor in between the boxes. I'm going to click and drag down. Now my cursor or my arc is facing the wrong way. So I'm going to flip it by pressing the F key and then I press the up arrow to change it to a less drastic curve. And I'm going to do the same thing two inches below. And I'm going to do it again, going to the other point. And now I go from the top down, and now I have this arc, or this star created with four arcs. Now let's say I want to have uh, maybe some shooting coming off, or some arcs to indicate some motion with this star. I want to show you one more technique that you can do. I'm going to click and drag a line. Now, without letting go, if I press spacebar on the keyboard, I can move this line wherever I want it to be. I'm going to move it right about there. Then I'm going to draw one more. This time I want to flip it. I'm going to move it a little bit. I'm going to change the angle by pressing the up arrow key. I flipped it by pressing F. And I move it right where I want it by using the space bar. And for this one I'm going to put it right there. I let go of the space bar to resize it. And it looks like that. So in under 10 minutes, you have learned how to use the Arc tool inside of Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to press Control-1 to zoom out, and you can see some of the shapes that you have created using the Arc tool. To turn off the grid, simply go up to View, Hide Grid, and there you have it. Different shapes that you have created using the Arc tool.